Drop your sword, father. You have nothing to be afraid of. Shall we abandon this then? Shall we lower our heads? No. No. You taught me that. Blood is approaching. Old but young. How strange. Shall I drink it? Smite it? No, father. He is a friend. Please, rest. I'll take care of it. Gaution, Elizabeth. Deceit runs through these veins. I know, father. What took you so long, Jonathan? Is this really him? Yes. This is William Marshall, first Earl of Pembroke, servant of five mortal kings, former regent and savior of England. The greatest knight who ever lived, according to some. And you called him father? For he gave me eternal life and much more. I have so many questions, Elizabeth. You always had questions, Dr. Reed. Now that I stand before you both, in this vault, I know not where to begin. We still have a few minutes left. Why did you flee here? When you told me I was the healthy carrier, I had nowhere else to go. You mean you had to return to the real source of this scourge? Yes. To end it, once and for all. Where are we? What is this place? This is the Ashbury Estate. I inherited the title when I purchased the castle. Is this your retreat? Something of a secret place? It's more of a sanctuary, really. This is where I take care of my father. Ever since he became... unwell. Are you not afraid someone might discover you here? It's not that hard to find. Do not assume that I would hesitate to silence anyone who tried to reveal my secret. Fortunately, it has rarely come to that. Will you go back to London? No, Jonathan. I do not intend to. And what of your daughter? Charlotte is a strong, independent woman who is about to come into money. I took care of everything. Now it's time for her to shape her future. I have destroyed the disaster, this creature that Harriet Jones had become. The epidemic is no more, and London will recover. In time. Yes. You did well, Jonathan. You truly saved the city. Yes, we did. Despite all obstacles. I'm truly convinced we did it together, Elizabeth. I cannot bear knowing I was the cause of all this, through the use of my own blood. No. This catastrophe was the result of unethical experimentation, and the will of a creature so inexplicably evil, she exceeds all the terrible wonders I have seen since my death. But it was my blood all along. My corrupted blood of hate. The poisoned blood of my father. A healthy carrier. That's all I am. Is he dangerous? What do you think? He is a thirsty Ekon, who has not fed in centuries. An elder vampire, driven by an urge to kill and spread the blood of hate. No redemption, then. And yet he thinks he has been offered immortality by the angels to protect the feeble and to smite the unholy. Can he communicate? Yes. Sometimes he even seems like the noble knight who saved and raised me. But you know, the malice never fully leaves his eyes. Why are you hiding William Marshall here? How could I not take care of him? He sacrificed himself by giving me the only dose of antidote he had. He gave you the antidote? Yes. 
And in doing so, he knew he'd have to be confined here. And yet he volunteered. That's how great a man William Marshall was, and still is. What do you do for him? I visit him as often as possible. I paint the landscapes he will never see again. I feed him with my blood. You feed him? You barely sustain yourself on the weak blood of the dying, yet you give him your blood? After he saved me from the blood rage, I swore I would never kill to feed. He said the same. Hmm. We could cure him. It's too late. The blood of hate has run for too long. The antidote would not work on him. I tried. Believe me, I tried. William Marshall infected you. He is the true original carrier. Yes. But he saved me by sacrificing himself. Saved you? How? The tears of angels. The cleansing of impure blood by an older, more powerful blood. It worked on me, did it not? Yes. Blood is the definitive key to our species. Scowls, cleansing, lineage. Do you really think it worked? It has, Jonathan. I was nothing but a beast who took pleasure in slaughter. I roamed across Europe, reaping my bloody crop. It was the blood of hate. But my father's antidote cured me. How did you meet William Marshall? He was an Econ for centuries when he found me. He saved me from certain death by making me his progeny. Why did he choose you? You should ask him that. Did you ever blame him? Not even when he was infected and bit me. He is my father. He raised me. He taught me how to behave. Who are you, really? How could I answer that? I went through many lives and identities to reach this day. To you, I am Elizabeth Ashbury. And that's all I wish to be. I understand. And I respect your desire for privacy. Thank you, Jonathan. What about us? What do you mean? You know my feelings towards you, Elizabeth. But you left without a word. So I'm worried about your feelings towards me. I love you, Jonathan. I've loved you since the moment I saw you rescue poor Mr. Hampton in that filthy slaughterhouse, forgetting the danger as you turned your back, like the newborn fool you were. You should have told me. No, Jonathan. The William Marshall myth lies at the heart of so many hostile plans. I could not risk jeopardizing his safety. So why did you come here? You knew I would follow you. And he bends to the fire. I can't let you go. Because I know now the blood of hate is still in my veins. No one but I can put an end to this tragedy. I can help you. You can trust me, Elizabeth. No, I cannot. You chose to follow Ascalon's orders. You unleashed an immortal Aloysius Dawson into this already fragile and suffering city. Would your protege agree to speak with me? I have so many questions for him. Go on, Jonathan. But be careful. Yes? So, William. My god. You really are William Marshall. You served Richard the Lionheart and his brother, King John. It is such a privilege to meet you. I did in my day. Come closer if you want to speak. For my hearing isn't what it used to be. I think your hearing is fine, sir. What is it you want, then? I found and defeated the disaster that was threatening to smite London. 
You should know that the city is safe for now, Sir William. Then may I call you brother? Did you resist its poison? Even a scratch from a beast so evil could endanger you and all those you care for. You also defeated one in 1666. Who was it? She was a malicious witch who spread plague throughout the city with her army of rats. She had been hiding in a bakery in Pudding Lane for months when I finally found her. How did you defeat it? We fought for hours. In the end, I had to lock her in St. Paul's Cathedral and burn the building down. I wanted to be sure she was destroyed. I found your research on the antidote. The tears of the angels. What ingredients did you use? Once I understood what the ingredients were, I used the tears of King Richard and the pure blood of the valiant Bodicea. King Richard and Bodicea? How did you find such relics? It took me many years to locate their hiding place. Then I had to learn the formula. If I recall, it belonged to an ancient brotherhood. The Order of St. Paul, I believe. And did it work? Yes. The tears cleansed my poor Elizabeth's blackened heart. It was such a blessing to see her smile again. The blood of hate. How does it affect you? Do you feel it now? The blood of hate? Yes. Nothing more than a sneeze, really. A sneeze held for so long, you could blow a fortress down if you released it. Can we speak about the Morrigan? The Red Queen? What of her? You met her, did you not? Just once. But she never ceased to sing to me. I love her song. It is a song of blood and war. I only wish she would sometimes let me rest. Do you know who she is? I don't want to discuss this in front of my sweet Elizabeth. Why? For a time, she too could hear the red song. The steps she danced to its melody brought pain upon the world. I would like to ask you about vampires. Vampires? What about them? Considering your experience, please tell me what you know. They are terrible creatures. I have seen and fought many in my time. Foul temptresses with sharp claws and shrieking beaks. I have never seen such a creature. What are you talking about? Of course you've never seen a creature like them. Vampires are deadly, swift, and implacable. He calls them a different thing. It's the Echons. Where did you encounter such creatures? The last time I saw one was in a Celtic temple near Salisbury. A terrible and god-forsaken place full of ghosts and pestilence. Do you remember Murden, your maker? Only God is my maker, for he created everything on this earth. He blessed me with eternal life through his archangel, Michael. But Murden, Michael, is a vampire. He made you a blood-sucking creature of the night. Blood, yes. I used to drink it from the throats of the unworthy. Then I was punished for my deceit. During my penance, I rely entirely upon my sweet Elizabeth. How did you meet Elizabeth? Times were tough. I had awakened to protect the land from a new plague. I heard her sing for her dead family. Singing for her death to come. I chose to save her. When was that? It was so long ago. 
A few years after Elizabeth of England and Catherine of France established their alliance against Spain. What did you do? I raised her as my progeny. After she left to see the world, I rebuilt her deceased parents' inn, owned it as William Thorne for a time. Those were good years. Tell me about Elizabeth. How was she infected? I do not wish to discuss it. Please, Sir William. I need to know what the blood of hate is. How is it transmitted? After defeating the disaster in St. Paul's Cathedral, I return to my retreat, infected. This is where my sweet Elizabeth found me, for she heard my pain from across the sea. Where is this retreat you mentioned? In London, under Temple Church, beneath my empty tomb. I always loved to sleep there while listening to the bell above. What happened then? The blood of hate had twisted me into a rage-filled man. I attacked my progeny and infected her too. Forgive me, Elizabeth. I failed you. You bit her again? Is that how she was infected with the disaster's blood? I think I understand now. Elizabeth fled, and I fell to my knees. Begging for forgiveness. I swore I would find a way to make things right. Did you really sacrifice yourself to save her? That was the only righteous path. The blood of hate made me betray her. I am at peace here. I can think about what I've done and how I failed. Do you not want to be cured? No. This hunger is mine. I would feel empty without it. It has been part of me for so long. All I want is quiet. Silence. You agreed to be confined here then? Yes. Once I was sure she was cured, I asked to be locked down here. I deserve it. The world needs it. We could set you free. Let you out. Isn't that what you want? I pray for the day I'll see the sky again. I have all but forgotten its colors. I could walk and do so many things beneath the stars. But I doubt it would be wise to release me. Then will you stay here and repent? Elizabeth told me it will not be long now. I cannot wait to feel the sweet caress of her hand on my cheek after so long as she releases me. Has the time come? Yes, Father. Why not unleash me then? To see the sky a final time? are the sky and all its stars. I'm not defeated, for I welcome the sword you bear, for it is mine. You were never defeated, my lord. Farewell, Father. <laughs> and to you also, Jonathan. What do you mean? I can't stand what I've become. This healthy carrier, as you put it. The flames will purify the poison that runs in my veins. No! I won't allow this to happen. I am death. Jonathan, wherever I go, I can't stand it. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, champion of Murden, chosen to save England from the vampire epidemic. I could cure you. What do you mean? We are creatures of blood, Elizabeth. Everything about us is in our blood. 
With time I could perfect the antidote William Marshall gave you. Trust me, for time is on our side. <sighs> that is a risk I cannot take, Jonathan. I won't bring another such disaster into this world. Elizabeth, no. Trust me. I can save you. How could I trust you, Jonathan? How could I take such a chance? I'll stay here with you then. As long as we must, until I find a cure. You have no idea what you're talking about, Jonathan. Despite his madness, William was strong enough to starve the centuries. I doubt we can do the same. We will lock ourselves down then. I'll get all the material I need and I'll perform my research here with you until you're cured. Are you mad? Who would take care of us? Who would free us if it takes decades or even more? Old Bridget will take care of us. You are serious, aren't you? You really are ready to do this. I love you, Elizabeth. I can do this. Please, stay with me. I... I believe you. This is crazy, but... I believe you, Jonathan. That was so well delivered. That was so well delivered. That is a dialogue about her realizing that he actually means it. And is not doing it at the spot. And the dialogue worries about convincing the player that he actually means it before she says that line, you're serious. This is madness. Which is awesome. That's so well written. That last one. One prayer for the summoned called by this song. Child born from darkness, whose path he must find. Now the song is sung, and your path chosen. England is safe, for you have prevailed. I bid you farewell, my champion, bittersweet. You found yourself a newer quest, and so I leave you to it. My queen sleeps once again, and I'll soon join her slumber, until alas she rises, woken by the hunger never fed. This ending is really good. I don't know what the other ones are, but this one is really good. I think at the end of the day, it's just... This game has some... Incredible prose. Like, the the second to second dialogue is incredible. There's so many amazing lines. And the last... That was that has to be one of the best endings of any game. The the very last bit. I mean, there's there's things that could be done better. Like, for example, the fact that we read the book and then act as if we hadn't read the book. That's kind of meh. But the ending is so well delivered. Because it, it mixes... It mixes... First off, there's foreshadowing. The moment she talks about herself, the camera pans midway through the dialogue. She talks about herself in a certain way, I forget. But the camera pans to the fire and you're like, she wants to kill herself in that fire. Um, so there's foreshadowing there, but, like, you're still processing the death of William Marshall, and the game spends a considerable amount of its time com talking about William Marshall and hy hyping him up, and then you're observing the death of this old vampire that is the or that is so historically relevant and important, and you're observing it, and, and, and it, it's also done well in terms of the graphics, and then you're just... You're still wallowing in that, and she immediately... It, the timing is impeccable. It is so... I love it so much. It's just how writing should be, is the timing is so important. And the timing is like, right away, you're still you're still thinking about William Marshall, and it's just like, I will kill myself. And then you see you see um, your character just turn on his heels and just immediately start to convince her about... For all we know, he hadn't thought of it from before, but... I suppose he has, and she gets convinced of that, that she, he thought about, he had thought about it. It's not him just saying words, he has a plan. And it's just beautiful, it's incredible. It's incredible, it's such an amazing ending. Such an amazing ending. What a, what an ending. Seriously, that was, that absolutely made the game. That absolutely made the game, that ending. Just, 
I had this game in my 4 out of 5 stars list. I am bumping it to 5 out of 5. What an incredible, what an incredible job. I, w I, I still think that it's, um, it's a game of two souls a little. The combat and the, and the narrative. And when I say the combat, I mean the exploration as well. And the narrative don't fit together how I, how I would personally use this writing talent. I would use this writing talent in a, uh, in a more traditional role-playing game. Um, but hopefully in my, in my Let's Play, I, I have done a good job in sort of chafing the exploration and the combat side of things enough to allow the role-playing and the storytelling to shine through. Because it's just it's so, so well-written. So well-written. There's some plot holes here and there, I suppose, and there's some weird things. But, yeah. That has been Vampire. Apparently, they're making a sequel. But honestly, I don't really care about a sequel. Uh, I What I care for is this writing team and these writers. They, um, they're really good. It's the pacing that really... It's not just the pacing, but the pacing makes it. There's, there's some amazing lines every once in a while. And, like, the thing is, good writers will make amazing lines. There's, it just, it happens when you see, when you see, when, whenever you play a game that is well written, it, it'll just happen every once in a while. There'll be a line or two, or a sentence, or it, it, just things that are like, oh, that is great. That, that is, like, inspired. And it, yeah, I can, I, all the games that I consider to be well written, they always have that. But the pacing of the storytelling, the pacing of the dialogues, a lot of the time is just mwah, chef's kiss. And that ending was impeccable. It is. It was impeccable. So yeah, that's going to be that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.